welcome students so in the last lecture we learned that how to prepare the ledger accounts post the journals which are recorded in the would post the transactions which are recorded in the journal to the ledger so we learned that how to post them in the ledger prepare the individual ledger accounts for each and every account and balance them now from those ledger accounts or drawing the balance from the ledger account we will have to prepare the financial statements important financial statements first we will prepare the two financial statements that is the trading and profit and loss account and second is the balance sheet and from the balance sheet we will prepare the third statement that is the cash flow statement cash flow statement is basically comes under the analysis of the financial statements especially the analysis of balance sheet but that's the job we will do later on as i told you that directly from the ledger you cannot prepare the profit and loss account or balance sheet means the financial statements you have to prepare one intervening statement that statement is called as the trial balance and trial balance is basically as i told you earlier also that is a account which verifies that whatever the transactions have been recorded in the journal and whatever the amount has been posted in the ledger they are arithmetically correct numerically correct and balances extracted out of these ledger accounts are also correct so from these balances in the ledger we will have to prepare that intervening statement and that intervening statement is called as the trial balance so trial balance format is little different and it is very simple so here you have the first column then you have the second column then you have two more columns here and this way it's going to be a complete format is going to be a complete format so here you have this is called as the uh, trial balance t r i a l balance b a l a n c e this is the trial balance b a l a n c e this is the trial balance so we will be preparing the intervening statement these columns first is the serial number this is for head of account this column is for head of account right and this is the column for balance those balances which you have calculated in the ledger and this is the column for debit balance and this is the column for cr is the credit balance this is for credit balance cr credit balance so we'll have to put the serial number and head of account and the balances and then see that after when we put all the balances at the right place total of this column should be equal to the total of this column the total of the both the columns should be correct now for my convenience i have put all these balances on a paper because i have uh, not i don't have the record here so i have put it on all these accounts and their balances on a paper you also have recorded it or you know it that what are the balances of the those transaction which were posted to the ledger so uh, i'll be taking it from here so first account we prepared was that was the cash account so it is one it is cash account and the balance of the cash account was 29650 and it is the debit balance it was a debit balance because debit side of the cash account was bigger side so the balance is known by the side which is bigger so cash account had a debit balance now we have second account we had was capital account capital account and the balance of the capital account was 50000 rupees but a credit balance this is 50000 rupees but a credit balance now we go for the next account and the next account is the furniture account so furniture account is having a again a debit balance because debit side is bigger so it is furniture account is 500 rupees now we have the fourth account and that was the sales account this account is the sales account and the sales account is having a credit balance of 24000s 
So, it is the 24,000 rupees is the sales balance account which is 24,000 rupees. So, we have taken it here. Now, we uh, take the next one that is the Naresh Kumar account. Naresh Kumar account has no balance, it is balanced. Total uh, sales made to him uh, were 8,000 rupees and he has paid 7,600 rupees. 400 this firm has given discount, beta has given discount to him. So, this account has no balance, it is balanced account. Then we talk about the next account and that is a Vinod Kumar's account. So, Vinod Kumar's account balance is Vinod Kumar and Vinod Kumar's account, Vinod Kumar's account and its balances, Vinod Kumar's account's balance is how much? Uh, this balance is credit balance for 2500 rupees, credit balance of 2500 rupees. This is a Vinod Kumar account. Now, we have the next account that is Raja's account. Raja's account and Raja's account has a balance of, you call it as debit balance of 6000 rupees. So, it is a debit balance of 6000 rupees. Now, we have stationary account. Next account is stationary account, stationary account and stationary account also has a debit balance of 250 rupees. Then we have the next accounts that is like office rent account. So, it is office rent account and the amount of the office rent account is 800 rupees. Right? This is 800 rupees. Then we have next is the purchase return account. Purchase return account and purchase return account has a credit balance of 500 rupees. Credit balance of 500 rupees. And then finally, we have 10th account is we have discount account discount account. So, it means discount accounts balance is 300 rupees. So, I think all the balances we have put here, we have taken them here and uh, if you uh, think about then there is no balance which is left I think or some balance is left. Yes, one balance is left I think it is a purchase account. Yes. This is the 11th account is the purchase account. So, cash, capital, furniture, sales, Vinod Kumar, Raja, station, purchase we have forgotten. So, you put here the purchase account. This is called as the purchase account and purchase accounts balance is uh, debit balance of 35,000 rupees. This is of 35,000 rupees. So, we have taken almost all the balances here and uh, if you are total it up. So, it means you will find that total of debit and credit balances is equal. That is 50,000, 24,000, 74,000 then plus 3, 77,000. And total of this side is also I think 77,000, 29, then 35, 650, then it is uh, 36, 150, then it is uh, 36, 400, uh, 37, 200 and then it is uh, 37, 500 and then 35. So, it is uh, 29,650, 35,000 is done, 500 done, then it is 6,000 is done, then we have 250, yes, 800 is there and 300 is there. So, if you take, make the total of this side, I think this is also equal to uh, 77,000, 5 and 5, 0. 1, 6, 7, 12, then it is 14, 14 and 8 is uh, 22, 25 and it is the same uh, balance. Uh, so, it is if you look at the total of 29,000 cash balance is 29,650, then we have the purchase account 35,000, then we have this uh, furniture account that is I think we are missing furniture account is so balance of the furniture account is now that we are we are committing look we are committing a mistake it is 5000. So, balance of the furniture account is 5000 not 500s and then we have uh, Raja's account 6000 
then we have stationary account 250, office rent account 800, then we have this account. So, total of this side is 77,000. So, both the sides are equal. So, you can say that whatever the transaction is recorded in the journal posted in the ledger, they are arithmetically correct. There is no mistake in this and we have done uh, whatever is done that is correctly done here. So, it means uh, this statement is a proof of the arithmetical accuracy of transactions recorded in general and posted in the ledger. Now, here arises one question. For example, as I have done it, you have seen it, I have done it uh, wrongfully that we have I have made it 500. Normally, the, the value actual value is 5000 rupees, but I have wrongly put it here as the 500 rupees. It may be possible that I have uh, I may or anybody else can do in the journal also that rather than 500 rupees in the one side you put 5000 on the other side you put 500 rupees. So, that difference of the 4500 will appear. For example, this trial balance does not tally right and we have to anyway prepare the financial statements on the last day of the accounting period. And if this trial balance is not telling, so can we proceed further to prepare the uh, profit and loss account on a balance sheet that is the two financial statements with the incorrect uh, trial balance, is it possible? Yes, it is possible. For example, if it is not telling, say for example, the, the here we, have, we, have, we have some problem here and uh, we have put here that is rather than 300 rupees, the balance of discount account is working out as 3000 rupees. So, if you look at this side, this side will be more by 2700 rupees. This will be bigger. So, the total of this side will be to 79,700 rupees and this will be 77,000 rupees. So, there will be a problem. So, what will happen that we will put this means uh, this side uh, is now coming out as 77,000, This side is will be 79,000. this side will become as 7 uh, I have made it. So, this balance for example, has come out as 3000 instead of 300 rupees. So, this side will become now 79,700, 79,700. So, but this side is this. So, this balance of 2700 rupees, you, so what we will do? We will extend this statement and we will make one more. So, this way we will extend this account and now we will when you extend this account what you will do you will put one item here which is called as suspense account. So, total of this side is 79,700 and total of this side is 77. So, you will put here 2700 rupees more suspense account and now the both total of both the sides will be 79,700 and it will be 79,700. So, it is telling now. So, we will temporarily prepare the profit and loss account and balance sheet by using this figure as means making using this balance as 79,700 and putting that difference amount of 2,700 rupees under suspense account. We will prepare the profit and loss account, we will prepare the balance sheet and once that everything is done, then we will have to look back. We will have to find out why this balance of difference of 2700 rupees is, is, is appearing in the trial balance. It means something has happened either in the journal or in the ledger, something has happened and <clears throat> because of that this trial balance is not telling. So, or maybe it has happened here only that I have put this balance of rather than 3000 rupees, I have uh, 300 rupees, I have made it 3000 rupees. So, this balance is appearing. So, what I will do? I will have to do this correction. I will find it out that actual balance of the discount account is 300 rupees. I have to do this correction. So, I will make it 300 rupees. Automatically, the balance of this account will become 77,000 rupees now and both the sides will be having the same balance of 77,000 rupees. This is also the 77,000 rupees. So, both the sides will be 77,000 rupees and I will remove this suspense account now and wherever the corrections are required. I have must have shown this balance in the profit and loss account as 3000 rupees, right. The balance of the discount account in the debit side of profit and loss account I must have shown that is 3000 rupees. So, I will make a correction there 
I will make it 300 rupees so that the actual amount is 300 rupees and I will see what is the impact of that in the profit and loss account and I will correct the profit and loss account. So, actual is 300 rupees not 3000 rupees and but we will not wait if the trial balance is not telling, we will put that amount of difference in the another account called as a suspense account and we will prepare the profit and loss account and balance sheet on the due date and after that due date we will get the time and during that time we will correct this mistake, this error and we will calculate the real profit or loss and the real balance in the balance sheet, we will put the real balances in the balance sheet and everything has to be arithmetically correct. So, if any error occurs and trial balance does not tell you put the balance in the suspense account for the time being and then after the date of the balance sheet you redo the whole means whole thing try to find out the error and you correct your profit and loss account and balance sheet that can be done. So, this is we have completed three steps so far in the process of preparing the financial statements that is the profit and loss account and, and the balance sheet. Now, we miss we, we learned how to record the first was the transaction in the accounting process the first uh, step was the transaction, second was the journal, third was the ledger, fourth one was the preparing the trial balance and from the trial balance we will have to now move forward to prepare the profit and loss account and balance sheet if the trial balance tallies and if it is a correct then we can easily prepare the profit and loss account and balance sheet there is no problem as such and it can be easily done. So, these balances can be taken to the profit and loss account and balance sheet, but since they are not complete balances both the sides are not complete. So, we will not be able to uh, prepare a correct profit and loss account from this information. So, for preparing the profit and loss account and balance sheet we will now take the help of another problem another illustration and this is the illustration where this information we will use and we will have to prepare now the profit and loss account. The first statement that is a trading and profit and loss account out of this information these balances this is a kind of a trial balance. The balances are extracted out here. So, we will have to use these balances and by using these balances we will prepare that we will learn how to move forward in preparing the financial statements. So, now let us move forward in preparing the financial statements that is the next step that once we have learned that how to prepare the trial balance then preparing the financial statements is not difficult we can easily do it and we can learn because analysis of the financial statements requires first of all that how to prepare the financial statements and if you know that how to prepare the financial statements you can easily read those financial statements and analyzing these financial statements will not be difficult at all. So, it means we have learned so far that what are the different steps involved. We have completed the four steps that is transaction, journal, ledger and trial balance. Now, we will proceed further for preparing the financial statements and the first statement as I told you in my some of the previous lectures was trading and profit and loss account and the second is the balance sheet and third one is again has now become a statutory though it is a part of the financial analysis, but that has become a statutory statement that is called as a cash flow statement. So, we learn how to prepare all the three statements. So, first statement is that is the trading and profit and loss account and as we have seen in some previous lectures the format, the format of trading and profit and loss account is again same. Again it is a T format kind of, it is kind of a ledger account format, but very simple and we have a columns here like or you can say that these two columns on the one side, two columns on the other side. So, this is here and this is here. So, we are now learning how to prepare the financial statements. So, first statement is the trading and profit and loss account. So, here look at this information now here we are asked financial statements problem 1 we are asked that a certain gross profit and net profit from the following balances extracted from the books of alpha associates. Alpha associate may be a sole proprietor organization. So, there is a difference in preparation of the accounts of the sole proprietors, single owner organizations, partnership firms and the company form of organizations. So, step by step we will learn how to prepare the financial statements of the sole proprietors, partnership firms and then the company form of organizations. So, now this is the sole proprietorship 
and for this sole proprietor we will have to calculate the gross profit and the net profit and this is the job of this statement that by preparing trading and profit and loss account we can get to know what is the gross profit of this organization, what is the net profit of this organization and trading and profit and loss account statement helps us to know the status of gross profit and net profit. First of all you write here the title trading and profit and loss account of alpha associates of alpha associates of alpha associates if some period is given then we will write here normally it is for one year for the year ending on the date is given here. So, it is trading and profit and loss account of alpha associates for the year ending on so and so since the, it depicts the profit or loss of the firm for a period of complete one year. So, we have the simple columns here like particulars, particulars, then we have a amount, again it is a particulars, then it is amount, this column is known as the debit column amount and this column is known as the credit column amount, right. Particulars amount debit, particulars amount credit. So, this on the other hand you would say this is the expense side of the firm, all the expenses will be recorded in the debit side, all the incomes will be recorded on the credit side and then the balance if income is more than the expense then the difference will be gross profit, if expense is more than the income then the gross loss and then we will move forward to prepare the second part profit and loss account, right. So, here in the trading account we take the incomes here and incomes in the trading account is coming from the two sources. One is the sales that normally whatever the firm is producing that is they are selling in the market and from the sales we are having the incomes. So, you will write sales and if some closing stock is left some part of the sales have for example, it is given here if the part of the sales are unsold in the market they will be sold in the future period. So, uh, that amount will also come to us. So, total of these we will write here. But we will write here items this side will be denoted by buy, item this side will be denoted by 2. So, you will write start here, first of all we will put all the expenses here. So, we will see the what are the direct expenses, we will say that first of all you are given here something like opening stock, opening stock is just normally is for the raw material. So, you will take only 3 items here, first is 2 opening stock of raw material, 2 opening stock of raw material and this opening stock of the raw material is 24,000 rupees. Then second item is 2 purchases of the raw material, we are also given 2 purchases, 2 purchases only we write 2 purchases this is 91,300 rupees, 91,300 rupees. Then we have next item is wages, 2 wages that is 18,100s and any other direct item here? Yeah, we have the factory rent. So, 2 factory rent, 2 factory rent, factory rent is 3000 rupees, good, take th factory rent, 3000 rupees. Then we have uh, freight on purchases, you can write here 2 freight on purchases, freight on purchases and the freight on purchases here is 3000 rupees. Any other item? No, any other purchase returns are also there, right. So, salaries, general expenses, discount and discount. So, here you have to make one correction that is opening stock of raw material, 2 purchases 91,000s, but since we have the purchase returns also, so this will be written in the inner column that is 91,300s and then you have to adjust for the purchase returns, part of the purchases what we purchase is returned. So, you were right here less, it is 
less purchase return P of D car you can write purchase return that is 4000 rupees. So, they are goods worth rupees 4000 they are returned. So, it is 87300 rupees purchases are used in the firm. I think there is no other direct expense and now it is the direct, direct incomes this is by sales. So, sales we have sales amount is that is sales amount is given to us top 160,000, 1 lakh 60,000 put it in the inner column less sales returns as we have returned the purchases somebody else is returning back to alpha associate some sales, sales returns and sales returns are 5000 rupees. So, this is final amount of the sales is 155,000 rupees. Then we have to take the closing stock here. By closing stock, by closing stock here, if you take the closing stock, then it is 22,100. 22,100. And other items we will not take in the trading round. So, we have taken the sales, purchase, wage, factory, rent, office, freight. Uh, freight on uh, sales is also there. We'll we have taken the freight on purchases 3000 rupees. Freight on sales will take in the profit and loss account, opening stock, closing stock, purchase returns, sale returns, salaries, general expenses, discount and discount to customers. So, it is <coughs> discount from creditors and discount to customers. So, it means these are the only items of the upper part of the profit and loss account that is of the trading account. So, we will total it up. So, this side becomes as normally this side should be bigger. So, it is 0, 0, 1, it is 7, it is 7. So, it is 1,77,100 rupees. I think this side is bigger. So, it is 1,77,100, 1,77,100. Now, the difference we will see, we will have to total it up on a different uh, paper. So, this becomes 24,000 if you total it up 24,000 then 87,300 then it is 18,100 and then it is 3,000 and then it is again 3,000. So, total of this side becomes 0, 0, it is 4, this is 11, 5, 2, 4, 1, lakh 35,400, right. If I am correct, it is 0, 0, 3, 4, 3, 3, 6, 8, 14, 7, 21, 4, 25, 2, 4, 1, 35, 400. So, the total of the credit side is 1 lakh 77,100 and total of the debit side is 1 lakh 35,400. So, it means we have to subtract it this 0, 0, 0, this 7, this is 1, then it is 4. So, 41,700 is the gross profit. Profit depicted by the trading account is the gross profit. This is not the net profit. So, this is the gross profit and the gross profit here is 41,700. Now, you must have a question that out of the total items given here, why I have taken only a few items 1, 2, 3 here and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 items this side, but I have left out the other items. So, it means uh, what we have to do is we have to take here the only those items which are the items of direct income, we have to take here the items of the direct expense, it means those expenses are direct expenses without which the production is not possible. If you do not have the material, you cannot do the production. If you do not have the people working on the plant, you do not you cannot do the production. If you pay, do not pay the factory rent, without factory you cannot do the production. If you do not pay the freight on purchases, material will not come in the plant, no production. And similarly, by incurring these expenses, what is the output? So, we put the output, this side output, part of the output is sold in the market. We sold for 160, we got back 5000. So, total sales is 1,55,000 and now this much of the material which we reduce after incurring these expenses is with us in the stock and 22,100 is the closing stock. So, the this side 
minus this side is the difference and this difference is called is a gross profit. Why it is called a gross profit? Because this is not the final profit, this is not the divisible profit. Final profit we will calculate in the lower part when we will prepare the profit and loss account and that we will do in the next lecture. Thank you very much.